everyone. Welcome back to Jurassic Plastic. I'm your host, Terrible Dactyl, and today we've got two of the earliest Carnegie Collection models. These are the male and female with baby Australopithecus models. Both of these were released among the first 10 Carnegie models in 1988, and we know that these were some of the earliest releases just because of how many different color variations there are. If you go and Google the Carnegie Collection Australopithecus, you'll see lots of different variants. Neither of these that we have here are the original variant, um, which, as far as I can tell from photos online and descriptions of some of the earliest Carnegie models, the original Australopithecus would have been um, not completely painted, but it would have been cast in a sort of um, beige or skin tone rubber and then painted on with the details. Um, this one, though, is pretty close to being original. As far as I can tell, this is probably the second release. I'm going to estimate that this female came out about 1989. And um, the reason I can tell that is it still has this very beige or, or peach um, skin tone here as a base color. It's beige or peach around the face. And that paint color actually covers the whole model. And then the brown uh, fur highlights were painted over that. And you can see on the back here, uh, there are some paint rubs where the brown paint has been rubbed off, revealing that peach paint underneath. So this was completely covered in that base color and then painted with a few layers of browns and beiges back over it. But if you actually look here at the paint rub on the wrist, let me see if I can focus it here. The wrist in my sample, you can see that there's that yellowish beige plastic underneath all the layers of paint and that's very similar to the kind of plastic that a lot of the original Carnegie models were made of. Um, it's very rubbery. You can see just how flexible this model is. It's similar in terms of um, the quality of the paint, the glossiness of the paint. It's a little glossy, it's not too glossy, but overall the, um, the quality of the model in terms of the paint, the texture of the vinyl is very similar to the Carnegie Pteranodon, which I reviewed previously, and you can see some information about that uh, early Pteranodon on my channel. One way that this model differs from later editions of the Australopithecus pair uh, is with the eyes. You can see that these eyes are basically a little line to delineate the eyelid, and then a little dot to delineate the eye or the pupil. You can see that the mouth has a slight pink painting on the lips. The very earliest models had a black line outlining the mouth and they also had some black um, stippling along the body to sort of represent uh, hairiness which was toned down for this one which just has different shades of brown layered onto it. And you can see on the back the date stamp here is a complete centered date stamp, just like all of the original Carnegie models molds had. You can also see that the base on this model is this dark kind of chocolate brown color. It's a little bit of a glossier paint color. On the very oldest original um, 1988 models, the base is actually painted gray. Now, these two, even though they seem to form a set, were actually sold separately. And this male that I have here is a later model than the female. And you can tell that this is a later model first and foremost because the date stamp has been changed. You can see here that the date stamp has the raised areas where after Safari LTD, Miami, Florida has been etched out of the mold. Down here, Made in China has been etched out and replaced with the CE mark. So we know that this is a later model. These features that I just explained can date this model to probably about 1991. So this is an early 90s version of the Australopithecus model. You can see that the eyes have been simplified down to be large black dots rather than the more subtly detailed eyes of the original. The original male would have had a face uh, the same color and style as this female, 
you can see that the face is also a darker color. The base color on this has been switched from a light peach to a darker yellowish brown, which shows through here on the face. And on the back, it still has that dark brown base that it's standing on. The male obviously is holding a rock, like it's getting ready to throw this at a Dinophilus or some kind of predator that may be attacking it. And it does still have uh, that little pink, very light pink highlighting or detailing on the inside of the mouth. There were even later releases of the Australopithecus that had more of a white color here on the mouth, probably just to represent teeth as if it were grinning or possibly bearing its teeth at a predator or an enemy. Um, some versions of Australopithecus that you'll find also have uh, darker paint on the head sort of to represent a different hair color. Interestingly, the male is still made of very rubbery material. By the early 90s, most of the Carnegie models were switching over to darker, harder gray vinyl. There was even a period in about 1989 or 1991 where a lot of the models were made in really solid, hard, almost brittle black plastic. Um, but this one's still very rubbery. I guess these probably stayed fairly rubbery through most of their production run, kind of like the Pteranodon did, and kind of like the Diplodocus did, just by necessity of having some thinner parts, although this isn't that thin, not nearly as thin as anything on the Diplodocus or the Pteranodon. So it's interesting that they stuck with the rubbery plastic for this model, even through the 1990s. They probably did not remake these Australopithecines too often, at least not as often as the other ones, just because, you know, I'm not sure that these really sold all that well. I have distinct memories of going into the World of Science store in the mall and seeing the same set of Australopithecus sitting around for months on end, maybe years on end. Um, obviously, this probably would not have been as popular with kids as the dinosaur models were. And uh, it's not that hard to explain why these were retired early. These models were not even listed in the collector's guides after 1996, um, even in the retirement program, almost like um, Safari and Carnegie kind of wanted to, to forget about their existence a little bit. They are a little bit dated looking, but it's kind of cool that Carnegie uh, included them in the line. Australopithecus is a, a pretty important species in paleontology and would have been pretty well known in the 1980s thanks to discoveries like um, Lucy which obviously was discovered in the 1970s but would have been well known at that time to the public and it's probably a safe bet that these are based on Australopithecus afarensis which is the species that Lucy belonged to. One interesting thing on my model here is that it has a World of Science tag still attached to the bottom. The World of Science is probably the main, one of the only stores that I would go to to buy Carnegie models as a kid. And I, probably most of the original Carnegie models that I have came from there. So it's kind of cool to have that little relic of an old dead mall franchise on the bottom there, especially since this is the older model. Um, these were probably discontinued or retired uh, in by the end of 1996, since they're not listed anywhere in the 1997 collector's guides. Safari never really went back and made any more hominins, let alone many more prehistoric mammal species for the rest of the Carnegie line, which is kind of a shame because even though the, the sculpting is a little bit crude on these, um, it is nice. You can see that there's some good muscle tone here. There's a little bit of texturing to indicate the fur or hair, especially around the jaw and the body. The older model does have a little bit sharper texturing, which is typical of the Carnegie collection where the older models are sharper and the newer ones suffer a little bit from mold fatigue as production went on. These are each about 10 centimeters tall, a little bit less than that if you measure from the base of the heel rather than the base of the stand. That puts them 
by my calculation at actually about one twelfth scale. Now these were advertised as being one fifteenth. I think they're a little bit tall for that, at least the female definitely is. The male Australopithecus tended to be taller than the female. You could always just say that this is a particularly tall female here. But at one twelfth scale, they're right in scale with six inch scale action figure like this. You can kind of see how short in stature Australopithecus would have been. So they don't quite fit in with the rest of the Carnegie line. The only other models that Carnegie ever released that were in the 112 to 115 range was the Smilodon, which came out at the same time, and I will try to review that model in the future. But they do have their own little spot on the Carnegie display mountain. So as far as I'm concerned, they are one of the stars of the original 1980s Carnegie collection line and something well worth looking out for if you are a collector of early safari models or the Carnegie collection in general. Um, these are really cool to have. You don't see too many toys or models or figurines of stem humans and early hominins like this. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Carnegie collection Australopithecus pair. I hope you'll join me again on the next episode of Jurassic Plastic and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you later, guys.